Welcome to Maryfield's Gardening Advisor, brought to you by the experts at Maryfield Garden Center. Join us as we discover beautiful plants, new trends, and exciting ideas for your landscape. So let's get growing together. Maryfield's Gardening Advisor, bringing out the best in your garden. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Maryfield's Gardening Advisor. I'm your host, Debbie Warhurst Cap, and I'm very excited to have Renetta Holt with us today. Renetta is Hi, one of our very talented landscape designers and has been on you know several times before yes thanks for being here today oh my pleasure it's always a good time <laughs> we were talking on the car on the way over here just going over things and it's just so fun to, to have you here we are going to be talking today uh, well it's summertime I mean I can't what I was just saying I can't believe it's almost July yep. but it's summertime and it's a time to really enjoy your landscape you get out there and you know you have some parties and watching the kids outside and that type of thing so you have some great ideas for us today on how to make the most of your landscape that's right we're going to talk about outdoor living today and the main thing to remember all day long during the show today mm -hmm. is it's all about you it's all about how you use your property and all about your landscape Absolutely. So lots of great ideas. Got a lot going on. Not going to be taking phone calls today, but we do have some great ideas. Lots of pictures to show you. Lots, lots of, of examples. So before we get started, just a couple of quick announcements. Um, if you've driven by any of our locations, you'll see that the tent is going up. Our annual tent sale is, well, is about to begin. We've, we kind of said it would be July 1st, but mm -hmm. We're putting things out there right now, so it's basically begun. It's begun. So, if, you know, go out, not everything is out there yet, and, and everything will change daily. So stop by often because there's going to be new things every every day. So I you always know. find good stuff in the tent sale. I know. Sale. I know. I was talking to somebody last night. And I was like, where'd you get that? He's like, oh, I got you from your tent sale last That's year. That's right. <laughs> like, oh, great. But, you know, 50 to 75, 85% off and more. I mean, mm -hmm. there's some great bargains out there. So it's just beginning. It'll go on for the next several weeks. So lots of time to uh, to get some really great things. Yes. So, uh, And I mentioned it's 4th. Uh, well, I didn't mention, but it is 4th of July coming up on Friday. Already? Again, hard to believe. Mm -hmm. uh, but we will be have our uh, closing a little bit early on 4th of July. We'll be open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on July 4th. So we can go enjoy some fireworks and picnics and, and that type That's of thing. Right. Family. Uh, but if you are going somewhere and need a, a gift or that type of thing, something to brighten up your landscape, if you're having a party, wanting to take a gift to somebody, we are fully stocked. You can see we've got some great ideas. We've got some beautiful plants, red, white, and blue plants. We've got, <laughs> I, I just let Diane put the hose up there, blue hose, red watering can, and, and an America sign. We are all American at all American. Garden Center. And just some great ideas for your, for your home, you know, some, for your parties, home decor, that type thing. Mm -hmm. So great plants, great items, great time. So, so that is basically all of our announcements today. Okay. So let's talk about outdoor living. Well, we are. We're going to uh, talk about outdoor living. Mm -hmm. And um, when I knew I was going to do the show about outdoor living, my first thing, what I always do is, what does that mean? Right. So, Debbie, for you, what do you like to do when you're outside? Well, when I'm outside, my first thought was... We have a front porch, and I thought I'd be out on the front porch, but my true passion is being out on my screened-in porch, because I like to be outside, but I like to be enclosed a little bit. Right. So there you're seeing a, a patio, but I mean, and, and our patio is down below, mm -hmm. so when we come out of the main part of the house, it's onto our deck and screened-in right. porch. So. And when I'm outside, I like to be outside. Mm -hmm. So um, the first picture that we were looking at mm -hmm. a, min a minute ago was a, a nice large patio, and and the, these people obviously like to entertain. This is not a spot for just, you know, the two of you. Mm -hmm. This is a place where you can go and have a fire in the fireplace, a lot of seating, um, a lot of features in this landscape. Now that is quite a, a, la a, a fireplace too. That's that quite a fireplace. Beautiful. That's a custom fireplace mm -hmm. and we'll talk a little bit more in another segment about the differences in the fireplaces mm -hmm. that you can have. But <clears throat> let's say you want a more intimate setting. Um, this is beautiful but maybe you just want a place to go at the end of the day where you can sit, read a book, mm -hmm. unwind, chill out a little bit. Your outdoor living space may just be a bench tucked away. And you know, you wouldn't think about that, but that is a great idea. 
just right. a, a little nook just all to yourself. Well, I guess, you know, you could put two people on that bench. You could put guess, two people but, on the bench. But, you know, I can just see myself with a cup of tea and uh, just really enjoying myself there. Well, that's right. So, again, it's all about, you know, what is your nirvana? Mm -hmm. um, in the next picture, you'll see uh, a vegetable garden. Mm -hmm. And um, I created this vegetable garden when I was working at an estate out in Rappahannock. And um, it was a, kind of a double thing that the, that the customers wanted. Mm -hmm. They wanted an organic ornamental vegetable garden. And you can see that what I did was I kind of made a landscape design out mm -hmm. of the vegetable garden right. with a path through it because they had a lot of guests that they would entertain and the guests would they would want them to be able to walk through the garden you know pick the herbs pick the fruit and your guests could go ahead and oh they were staying at the estate yeah okay, gotcha. if they were mm -hmm. staying they could go through right. so nice. maybe your personal outdoor living space is putzing around in the garden doesn't mm -hmm. have to be to mm -hmm. that extent um, or um, don't underestimate the power of lawn right. either um, in the next picture you'll see a, a you know, a typical house mm -hmm. in Virginia. Right. But lawn is great outdoor living as well. If you have children, if you have pets, you want to throw the football, you want to throw the soccer ball. Um, a nice lush lawn is really the way to you know, the way to go. So there's a whole lot of different ways you can customize your um, outdoor living, and it doesn't have to be hardscape. Mm -hmm. Well, I think people kind of start with the lawn. You they know, do. They, you, mm -hmm. you know, you and, and what are you using it for? Like you said, if you're throwing when you're, the ball, when and your kids and it changes over time. And toddlers so when you're, can't hurt themselves falling on the soft grass. Exactly, grounds. exactly. So you know, in the beginning of your when you first have your kids, you're out with the with the swing set mm -hmm. and the and the kiddie jungle pool gym. and jungle gym and that mm -hmm. type thing. And then as you get later on in your in your life, you know, it's going to be something totally Could be different. Changing, and at that point, you might want to look at. Um, taking some of the lawn away, adding some planting beds, adding a, a, a hardscape feature. Mm -hmm. So you're right, a landscape does evolve. Right. It's not just one thing that stays the same all the time. It changes constantly, as does the environment. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes trees grow and you'll have tree roots right. uh, compromising things. And so you have to kind of be flexible, and but that gives you an opportunity to change that's it up right, later on. That's right. That's right. You always want to do that. Yeah. Well, we've got lots of ideas to, sh to share with you today, so grab a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, get your notepad or your iPi iPad, and, that's right. and get, uh, get some ideas down because we've got lots to share with you. We're going to be right back. July. Happy Happy Fourth of July, everybody! I can't believe it's it's here. So. Well, we got a late start. We did. We yeah. did get a late start this year. So and throughout the set, you'll see little Diane's got little nuances of Fourth of July around. That's right. So it'll be it'll be fun. But we are talking outdoor living, which is perfect for the Fourth of July because you're having right. a barbecue or a party or that mm -hmm. type of thing. Um, and there's lots of different options, as you mentioned at the beginning. It depends right. on what you're looking for, and you look at the customer first. I look at the customer first, and, and when I go to do a site visit and I talk to the people, I try to get them to do a little bit of soul searching mm -hmm. um, and ask them. To me. A landscape is all about circulation, and what circulation means is how do you work on your property? Where do you go? How do you use it? What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. And quite often, if they ask me to do something that I think might be um, not the best way to spend their money, right. for instance, a lot of people ask me to pave underneath their deck. Well, I'm an outdoor gal. Mm -hmm. I work outside. I practically live outside. Um, but sitting under a deck, I'm sorry, Debbie, it gives right. me the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> it does. I don't, I, and half right. the time, I don't know why I'm saying things. It's just how I feel. Mm -hmm. So often I'll say to the customer, look, if you want to sit under your deck, go get some lawn chairs right now. Mm -hmm. Go sit under there and tell me how you feel. And if you still feel good about it, hey, I'll design That's something up for idea. you. That's a great idea. But you have to really put yourself in that place in your property and see, am I going to use it before right. you spend money? Exactly. You don't want to go through a big expense and then say, hey, I wish I hadn't done that. That's right. Mm -hmm. And you look at this beautiful landscape. Um, now, this is not a huge area, and it looks it looks large, but if you look at the chairs um, and the benches, you can right. kind of put into perspective, uh, perspective mm -hmm. what you've got there. But this has a lot of features crammed into a certain small little space. Mm -hmm. You've got your vertical element for some shade, and also the light 
coming through that uh, trellis on the top, get you know makes a little pattern change mm -hmm. and gives a little bit of um, artistic quality down on the patio. Um, you have a very formal rectangular pond, koi pond. Uh, the benches are rectangular, the patio is rectangular. A lot of geometry going on here. And when you have that geometry, even the, the boxwoods, very equidistant around mm -hmm. the pond, um, that is a very, very formal landscape. It's beautiful, but it's, it's sober. I wouldn't call it a fun landscape, mm -hmm. but I love the fact that you're the way they've got the, the benches and the seating there. You're looking across that pond to each, to each you're other right. when you're talking. You're right. And, mm -hmm. But again, I would say for me, looking mm -hmm. at it, this landscape is more for people who entertain. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there is a sense of formality in that. Mm -hmm. Now, in the next patio that we're going to look at is a patio that I built for one of my customers. And this patio changed dramatically from the way I had it drawn really? on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. um, this is a patio for just the family. You come out the basement and you just enough room for a couple of seats, you know, maybe mm -hmm. four people. Comfortable for that, but you know, it, you'd be hard pressed to put a lot of people on that patio. Right, right. But as we were building it, um, the customer did exactly what I encourage my customers to do, is to be out there looking at it and looking at how it's taking shape. And um, we started to dig it out and she came out and she said, let's make it a little rounder. I think the front end mm -hmm. of it is a little flat for me. And the steps changed as well. And so she was very involved in taking an idea, a concept that I had, right. and throughout the job, it morphed into her patio, not That's my great. patio. Right. Mm -hmm. um, we designers at Maryfield, it's kind of like we're a medium mm -hmm. between what you want right. and, and what, what we can make. Mm -hmm. And so it's our job to kind of get that information out of you right. and work together as a partnership to build the landscape that you want. So that's great that she was you know, actively involved, actively involved. and coming out and taking a look as it's, as it's going on. We like that. Mm -hmm. um, in the next patio, um, again, you've got, there's a lot going there on here. You have multi a multi-level. Mm -hmm. Now the bottom patio, um, it does make you feel a little bit uh, cozy because it's it's sunken, you know, right. so you can sit down in there with a sense of enclosure. But that's your destination patio. You got to work to get there. Mm -hmm. I am not going to walk down there with a tray of hamburgers in one hand and my pitcher of lemonade in the other. It's I mean, it's kind of far to go to right. get out there. Where I love the way they have the little balcony patio, so you can just slip out with your cup of coffee and your newspaper or your magazine. That's the more um, usable mm -hmm. uh, living space in this feature. You come out, you sit down um, just by yourself if you want, but entertaining you can go to the other the other one. Mm -hmm. Now very very strong contrast is the next picture where you've just got a very rustic little seating area. A bench against a, a stone wall. Um, even the, the um, covering there is you know covered with wisteria it's very very uh, outdoorsy very rustic got some pea gravel and this is again a little cool place mm -hmm. is what I see when I look at that it's cool it's a little place to get away maybe with two people but that's where I want to take my book and just sit right. and escape for a little bit and I love a perga pergola with, uh -huh. with plants over it. That's what we were trying to do on our deck before we turned it into a screened import. Into a screened import. And it wasn't quite working, so. But that's that's <laughs> a very cool, and that's in the middle of summer. I could tell from the, the clematis, right. the sweet autumn clematis, mm -hmm. and it still looks like a, a cool yes. you know, place to go. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of outdoor living, I want to touch on some plants that I really love uh, to use around patios and um, your outdoor living spaces. We kind of get now, I mean, I know we're Maryfield Garden Center, and we sell flowers, but, <laughs> but we do a lot more than that. That's right. And now the big push, the big hot thing, is bold, lush, tropical foliage. In this picture, the pot really does the talking. Yes. The plants are, are almost insignificant because the, the pot is the thing that makes a statement. But you've got the red dracaena spike coming out the top. Um, and some sweet potato vines, bright color contrast, and that's very nice. And again, the beauty part of the 
plants and the containers that I'm going to show you in this uh, show today is gives you a lot of color and excitement. And even though we love our pollinators, we do not want to share our lemonade with the bees. That's right. So That's right. Um, these are kind of low um, insect plants. Well, and to me, that dracaena is a, is a statement as well. It makes it, it a is. nice, big, tall container, which right. is beautiful. It is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then in the next picture, you see just very simple. It's a red coleus, um, and it contrasts beautifully with this, this humongous elephant <laughs> ear. Um, I did a, some planters on either side of my front door one, one year, and mm -hmm. my son, who was a teenager at the time, said, that's a really manly pot you did mom and I said well thanks mom happy to oblige <laughs> um, and in the last picture of this segment um, we have another container and again it's got uh, bold tropical foliage mm, beautiful the red things are begonias believe it or not mm -hmm. with some very interesting leaves um, and then some coleus and there's both sun and shade coleus so you can configure the container to go on a shady spot right. or in a sunny spot perfect and containers I mean the variety in containers besides the variety of plants but the varieties of containers these days is I just know. amazing it's hard to make a decision when I'm doing something for somebody it takes mm -hmm. me a long time to pick it out <laughs> well that's a good thing <laughs> that's right <laughs> Okay, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with some more ideas. Welcome back. We're talking about outdoor living at its very best, and our guest today, or not guest, uh, you're, you're I'm a part friend. of the family, <laughs> part of the family here, part of the Maryfield's Gardening Advisor family. Renetta Holt is here, one of our wonderful landscape designers, with some ideas on what you can do to your outdoor living space. And we were talking during the break, structures, decks, mm -hmm. patios, that type of thing. That is, I mean, there's used to just you'd have a deck you have a deck that was and it. and now the choices are just endless the choices are endless and um you know I want to jump right away into the first picture because we've got a lot to talk about in in this segment and the first picture is a screened in porch and I'm getting many many requests uh, for people wanting to take their deck and turning it into a screened in porch or a sunroom mm -hmm. Um, and of course, as you said, this is your favorite place right. to be Absolutely. in your house. Mm -hmm. And um, it does, you know, when you do that and you have the roof over top, it does make it more usable in more seasons. You know, keep the mosquitoes mm -hmm. out. You can put your fan there and everything. And you can get your family actually to come out there. And you can, <laughs> yes, you can get your family to come out right. there. Um, and and again. I would say when I started doing landscaping for Maryfield, I don't think I got maybe but one request a year mm -hmm. for a screened in something. Okay. Now I'm probably getting one request a week for an enclosure type of some of, kind. Of some kind. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that I always pay attention to are the trends. Right. And as you said, you know, it, a long time ago, you only had decks. Right. And so I want to talk about decks a little bit. And this is a beautiful deck. Um, and sometimes you really have to have a deck because I notice in a lot of new homes um, that have three levels, mm -hmm. you know, from the front of the house you may only see two floors, but in the back there's three, right. and off the main floor is a door that kind of goes to nowhere. Mm -hmm. And so in a lot of cases you have to have at least a landing or some kind of a little deck out there so that, you know, you can easily get out. Or if you have a patio down below, as I said to you during the break, it, you almost have to build the stairway to heaven right, right. to get up and down. <laughs> well, so, there's nothing worse than, than looking at the back of the house and there's this door just sitting there with, with no right. way to go so out. So you have to do something. <laughs> so sometimes you do have to have a deck. Um, but I'm also getting very, very many requests for tea houses and gazebos. Mm -hmm. And um, well, we... Uh, can either custom build something for you or we're going to talk about Walpole in a little bit um, where they can customize something and we can install it for you. Mm -hmm. um, if you are interested in a tea house, which I love the idea, it's a little bit different, we've got a really cute tea house out at the Gainesville location. Um, in our, it's, it's our shrub gazebo. Right. So mm -hmm. if you go out to the Gainesville location, that go, is not what you're looking at. Of course, no, no. <laughs> this is a this is a gazebo that we built a number of years ago for right. a customer. Mm -hmm. um, but you can go to the Gainesville location and take a look. Mm -hmm. um, you the, know, before we get too far off of decks, yeah, you had you were telling me about codes and that type yeah. of thing that they have changed. Yeah, and that's you know, really important mm -hmm. to talk about. Um, people 
you know, always seem to think that wood structures are a better price point. Mm -hmm. If they don't have a lot of you know, limited budget, they want to go with a deck because they think, oh, that's going to be less expensive than a patio. But you need to be aware that the codes are, are changing in many of the counties. Uh, a deck cannot be, in most cases, attached to the house any longer, and it's freestanding. What that does, it creates the need for more posts and footers, uh, which are, you know, against the house now. So that drives up the cost. Mm -hmm. Now, also, a lot of people will say to me, well, I want to keep my deck because the structure's all right, but I hate the wood. It's too much maintenance. So I want to go with a composite. I just want to resurface it. But be aware also that if your patio, I mean, your sorry, your deck was built a long time ago, it's not going to be up to the codes that we have right now. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to have to be reinforced with more joists to um, provide the support that the composite material needs. Mm -hmm. So again, a deck is not a cheap alternative mm -hmm. anymore. So if you really are, are thinking of a deck just because you think you're going to save some money and you have the area for a patio, Think about your choices are more equal, now. right? Mm -hmm. The cost is a little bit more um, more even, right? Mm -hmm. and now we're going to take a few minutes to talk about Walpole, which is a wonderful company uh, that started in New England with cedar products, and now um, they have both cedar and composite products. And what's wonderful about us partnering with Walpole is um, we have wonderful carpenters, and they can build absolutely anything but they're building it from the ground up they're building it from scratch mm -hmm. and um, that takes a lot of craftsmanship and it takes a lot of time but working with Walpole is very interesting because they have what the way I like to describe it is they have pre-built components that are customizable Oh, that's nice, yes. To mm -hmm. exactly what you want. Here's a cute little archway over a fence. They do fences, pergolas, arbors. They have all different sizes. They have different uh, finishes. You know, it might this one may be rounded, but you may see, like mm -hmm. this one right here, it has a little bit more of an Asian feel because it right. goes straight across. A nice, simple entry to the, to the property. Um, and so... Uh, Walpole is helping us. Uh, they send their engineers out with us to do the site visit and um, help us learn because we've only been uh, using the product for uh, with Maryfield mm -hmm. for probably within a year. Probably so like we're, we're learning and they're, they're great teachers and they're helping us be able to create these wonderful structures. In the next photograph, um, this is a Sharon Ross design, one of our designers at Maryfield, and it shows the awning that you can attach to these wall pole. Wonderful. And some of them are uh, motor operated and some of them are manual and they come in a lot of different colors. So this is something that you can have on when you want to. You can take it off That's if, a great idea. if you want to get some sun. Mm -hmm. And again, it just that color and that awning there just makes it just cozy. That's wonderful. And we should point out I, at each of our locations Walpole has put some structures up. So yes. you can actually come out Touch them, feel them, right. you know, see what, get a good perspective size right. wise and that type thing. So and, we've got right. three or four at our Fair Oaks, Fair Oaks location. Fair Oaks are working on them. And they so. come in different colors too. Mm -hmm. um, then the, the last couple slides I can go through pretty quickly, but I want to talk about a couple of my favorite plants for outdoor living that give you wonderful fragrance, but not, again, uh, high on our pollinator friends. Right. This one is a Sweet Bay Magnolia, and the next one is a Hardy Gardenia. Um, the hardy gardenia is great. It's a nice shrub that comes in different sizes. Wonderful reblooming throughout the summer to give you wonderful tropical fragrance. But again, not not very attractive to the insects. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Once again, we've got to take a break, but we will be right back. Stay tuned. During this segment, we're going to heat it up a little bit, but That's in a right. good way. In a good way. That's right. Not that it's hot outside, but well, that it's hot outside. We're going to heat it up <laughs> with fire features. That's right. That's right. So, um, people, again, fire features are huge in the landscape. It's something that I would say almost every one of my customers asks for. Mm -hmm. But I got a question for you, Debbie. Mm -hmm. 
it's, it's not a quiz. Okay. But um, I know. <laughs> what do you think code wise, again, and I'm going to be talking a lot about codes because mm -hmm. I don't, I hate for customers, it makes me sad. Right. When I go to their house and they've got their heart set on something and I look at the situation and I realize we can't do it because of mm -hmm. the constraints of the property or codes. And we as um, customers would not think about that. No. Yeah. No, um, but we as you know, people who install right. need to pay attention to mm -hmm. that. Which do you think is easier code-wise to have in your landscape, a fire pit or a fireplace? I would think a fire pit. Uh, most people would think a fire pit. Right. Because it's smaller. Right. And it's, um, you know, you think a big fireplace, mm -hmm. but it's not. Really? A fire pit has to be 25 feet away from the house because... People build bonfires in them, ah, and you're and not supposed to do that. Enclosed. Right, fireplace gotcha. is enclosed. Mm -hmm. um, it's safer. It's mm -hmm. got the flu. Um, now, a fire pit. Here's a, a landscape that we did of a fire pit, um, and the fire pits that we have, we can either custom build you one to your specifications, or we can um, do a fire pit kit, which you'll see in a minute. Mm -hmm. So that one is obviously far away, enough away from the house. It's far enough away from mm -hmm. the house, um, but something I, I like to point out too is most people get in their minds that a fire pit like this should be in the center of the patio. Mm -hmm. They envision everybody sitting around in a big circle, you know, with cooking s'mores and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Sounds and good to sure, me. you can do that, <laughs> mm -hmm. but practical Renetta um, <laughs> likes to point out, well, see, I like everybody to get the most bang for their buck. Mm -hmm. And if I'm paying for that patio, I want to put as many people in chairs out there as I can. Okay. So if you offset the fire pit maybe to the corner, you, it, when not using the fire pit, you have more usable space oh, for tables idea. and chairs. Mm -hmm. um, in the next picture, um, you can see one of my customers um, that we did just a very, very simple rustic fire pit. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a fire pit kit, and you see on it, um, the mesh dome. In Fairfax County, and I th imagine some of the other counties too, when you have a fire going, you're supposed to have it covered. Really? Okay. Yeah, you're not supposed Didn't to have any that. open fires. Mm -hmm. And so, Techo Block makes this fire pit kit, and I love it because it's really kind of foolproof. You build the fire pit, and then the fire bowl is like a little wok that sits right on top of there, mm -hmm. and it fits right in the top course of the stone. And then you have the mesh cover that fits on there, and you can have a safe oh, that's great. fire pit, mm -hmm. a safe fire. It can't hold as much wood. Uh -huh. I know a lot of the, you know, I, I don't know if there's many teenagers watching, but dads are like, dang, I want a right. blazing inferno. <laughs> it, it sort of keeps you from doing that, right. so it makes it a little bit safer. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something you need to pay attention mm -hmm. to as well. Um, the next picture is a beautiful, beautiful landscape oh, with everything you could possibly want in mm -hmm. it and a nice custom fireplace. So to take a moment to talk about fireplaces, again, Maryfield can custom build a fireplace um, where it's designed from scratch and built from scratch. And you can, you know, configure it any way you want. That is As gorgeous. long as it, you know, is, is up to code. Mm -hmm. We also carry um, fire pit Oh, I, I mean fireplace. fireplace. I like to call them skeletons. Mm -hmm. It's like a prefab inside of the fireplace okay. with nothing on the outside. And they come in different shapes. Mm -hmm. So you pick the shape that you want and then we install it and then we veneer the stone of your choice to the fireplace. Oh, okay. And then the third option is a fireplace kit, which we will show shortly. Mm -hmm. A little later on. And actually, that's in a job that you have been yes, working that I've been on. Working We're going to show you kind of the start to yes. almost finish. I can't wait to get <laughs> to that part. It's my favorite part of the show. <laughs> um, and outdoor kitchens are still big. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still getting some requests for kitchens, but you have to think very carefully because it is a whole kitchen outside you're not moving that grill. Right. It's built in. If it's hot and sunny in that spot, you can't roll the grill to True. the other side of the patio. Mm -hmm. So if you want one, it's great, but it has to be very carefully thought out, very carefully sighted, and um, carefully installed because it's going to be there for a long time to mm -hmm. come. And you really have to have it the way you want it. And also, uh, one of the things that I've started to do is so that it's not quite so permanent is building a patio with a pa another little area off of it so that it's separated and you can put your grill 
um, or your cooking devices gotcha. on that separate part of the okay. patio. Mm -hmm. um, this is a job I did a long time ago, and it's just it's super simple. But the the wife was very unhappy that the husband had his smoker on the lawn, or in the flower bed. Gotcha. I can I can agree with her. Yeah, on. and he liked he likes to use his smoker. And what we did was just a very simple um, designated area, designated area, area mm -hmm. with cut flagstone just to, you know, for have him have a place to go. Mm -hmm. And if he does need to move it, he can. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, moving on, the last three pictures are going to be of the same landscape, but they're very different and there's some features that I want to point out. I want you to pay close attention to this picture. Um, it's a large patio and it does have a change of paving feature in the middle which allows for people to feel a little bit more intimate by creating a sense of enclosure without a grade change. And I want you to look at this picture. I think it's dusk and it's cool and calm and serene mm -hmm. and now it's night and you would think <sighs> that it would be look warm cooler, and but it's warm look and inviting with mm. the addition of lighting. Lighting is amazing. Lighting makes all the difference in the world. It, you know, it really does. There's a home in our neighborhood that every time I come, come in, they've got some beautiful landscape lighting, and I just love going past that house. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It helps. And the third picture at the same property, again, simple. It's a bench in front of the of a wall of the house with three very formal trees with no lighting this could be quite stark and frankly um, I wouldn't say boring but you know pretty static not a lot of movement. And I can envision what that looked like before. Yeah. I mean nothing there and just very stark. Very yes. stark but with the addition of the little patio the cute bench the trees and then up lighting them against that wall it just really I mean, I'm I'm anxious to go sit there. And, right. Well, know. and the and the brick wall is beautiful. The brick wall itself. is beautiful, and yeah. it, it offsets that as well. Right. So, um, there's a lot of things you can do. Absolutely, that's great. Well, when we come back, we're gonna we've heated it up this time. We're, we're gonna, gonna cool, cool it down. down. Yep. We'll be right back. We're back, and I, I wanted to remind everybody before we get get back to the to the topic. Mm -hmm. We you know we do the show live, of course, yes. um, and so if you have any questions now, normally I would say if it was David or Peggy, I'd say, well, just they're going back to the store afterwards. You can just That's stop right. by and see them. Today's my day off. Today's your day off. That's so, right. but tomorrow you will be at Gainesville. I will. I'll be right, at, at Gainesville, Gainesville location, location as I am most Sundays. Right. If you ever want to come in and you can get some design help mm -hmm. or have questions, I'm glad to help you out. So. Please take advantage of that. Yeah. Also, I wanted to mention, we're showing a lot here, a lot of pictures and a lot of ideas. Mm -hmm. So if you go on our website, uh, maryfieldgardencenter.com, we have uh, information about the TV show and we archive past shows. So like today's show, sometimes, most times are up on Saturday, mm -hmm. but uh, sometimes I'd give it till Monday, till Monday just to be on, on the safe side. But you can see all the pictures, you can see what, you know, our script, quote yeah, unquote so script, you know, where we're kind of talking. forgot what yeah. we said about something. Exactly. And of course out. you can always email or, or call or, you know, if you have a question or whatever, but just want to remind you about that. That's good. Sorry to interrupt, but. You didn't interrupt. Okay. That's good. <laughs> um, now we're going to cool it down with water features and swimming pools. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of customers have pools and the question becomes, what can I plant around my pool? What, you know, I want color, I want, you know, it fragrance, I want it to be flowery. I want that. I want that too. <laughs> That's what I want. I don't have the property to support that right now. Um, but you have to be real careful. You know, a lot of people say, oh, I want to create myrtle around the pool because that tree, my goodness, it blooms July, August, mm -hmm. September. Um, but all of a sudden the little flowers start floating around in, in your pool. pool. Mm -hmm. So you, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about different kinds of plants that you can use around an outdoor living space that again don't attract a lot of pollinators but will give you a lot of color. Um, the next picture um, is, this is, this is my backyard, Debbie. Uh, you know that looks an awful lot, a lot, awful lot like the Lewis Ginter. Uh, oh, maybe in, it is. In I guess. I think. Yeah. Well, you caught me. Public garden. This is what mm -hmm. I would like to have in my backyard. <laughs> um, but looking at this picture made me remember that I have fallen in love with conifers, um, which are needly evergreens. Mm -hmm. I used to not like them because I thought they were boring. But there's a lot of cultivars, a lot of textures and colors. And if you look in this picture, which you could imagine around a swimming pool or right. a, a waterfall, mm -hmm. 
there's a red Japanese maple, and everything else is an evergreen, and it is not one bit boring. Oh, it's gorgeous. It is, it is not one bit dull. It's very colorful. It's very alive. Um, it adds a lot of presence to the water feature without flowers. That's what I was going to say. It really complements the, the water feature. Yeah, and you know, you don't have to have flowers. And again, it's not that I'm anti-flower, that's the second time I've said it here. <laughs> I love flowers, but um, there are other options. Mm -hmm. um, and in the next picture, it, we are gonna take the water feature down a notch to something, you know, a smaller water feature, but I wanna point out some elements of this landscape. It is very, very extraordinarily, completely, totally formal. Mm -hmm. um, you have a geometric circular patio. You have a circular fountain. You have a circular topiary. You have upright evergreens against the fence, and you have three statues equidistant, triangulated mm -hmm. around the circular patio. Right. Now, what would you say about this customer? My guess would be that they are very formal and they like a lot of structure, mm -hmm. which is great. Which is beautiful. It's beautiful. It's very, um, you know, sometimes I get overwhelmed with fussiness and it's very clean right. and neat. But it does create an issue at times with plants because when you add more hardscape, when you add more uh, paving, you add heat. Okay. It's That's, like you're I would paving not have thought your, about that. Your, yeah, mm -hmm. you're paving your property. Mm -hmm. And so when that happens, it sometimes becomes problematic. You put your pansies, lovely, you buy them at Maryfield, mm -hmm. you put them in your pot, you take them, you put them in, in place, right. and in two hours they're coughing and mm -hmm. asking you for more water. And so I have found that tropicals are a great answer for those customers out there who have very hot spaces where they need to put containers. Right. You know, a balcony or a deck that's either, um, or even an east-facing deck can be really hot in the morning. Right. And, you know, your, your plants are just screaming for water. Mm -hmm. So in the next picture, we've got a, um, a container with, again, some tropical foliage in it and um, just a few little flowers to add a pop of interest. But your, um, there's sun coleus, there are uh, palm trees, there are a lot of tropical things. Think of Hawaii and you can oh. imagine mm -hmm. the kind of things that you can put in pots right. on you know, a hot mm -hmm. spot. Right. Um, then in the next picture, we have a much, much more informal fountain. This is what we call a disappearing fountain. Uh, you can customize it yourself. It's a basin that's buried underground that holds the water. And it has a little grid on top. And that grid will support either a boulder or a, an urn or a statue. Mm -hmm. And uh, it recirculates the water. Um, it's a very cost-effective and a very... Uh, low maintenance way to have a water feature. And I love the color and interest of the very casual um, annuals and perennials oh, around yes. this. You know, this and, is and the disappearing fountains, kind of a few years, they've been around a few years. Yes, and they're, they're gaining popularity. They, okay, that's what I was They're gaining ask. popularity. They're really, they're, mm -hmm. um, we have another one in the next picture, actually. And in this picture, it's a, it's a great story to tell. My customer um, has lots of animals. She has a horse and some parrots and mm -hmm. some bunnies. And she wanted to take her whole town home and turn it into a wildlife habitat. And that is a town home. That's a town home. Wow. Um, we I mean, built that a, looks bigger than it does. It does. It does. Mm -hmm. it's, it's deceiving. We built a... Um, dry stream bed and uh, stone walkway to the back. And there's another disappearing fountain, but this one is a drilled boulder. And um, we also added every plant in there has some benefit to birds or bees. Oh, great. Including in the background, it's kind of hard to see, we put a service berry, which has edible berries in the summer. Mm -hmm. And she has parrots, and she puts her aviary out there. And when the, the berries ripen and fall into the aviary, the parrots Aww. get a treat. That's great. Yeah, so we <laughs> customized it for her and her parrots. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And then, the, again, a couple of plants here that are some of my favorites for outdoor living in the summer. The oak leaf hydrangea, a big bloomer, a big show. Um, and then you can see the fall color in the next picture, which is gorgeous. Most hydrangeas oh, don't change yes. color, but they give Beautiful. you a lot. And then the hot ticket item you must have somewhere on your property now or you're just not cool. <laughs> well, gotta um, be cool. Our sedum. Oh, Hens yes. and chicks, succulents in pots as ground cover. They are selling, we even sell them um, in flats 
mix different ones like this like for this? ground cover. Uh -huh. Cool. So very cool. And you got to be cool. You got to be cool. Okay. Speaking of cool, in our next segment, we are going to take a look at this landscape that, that you've That's been working right. at a townhouse, at a townhouse, at a fireplace with our Maryfield superheroes. That's right. You got to see this. We'll be right back. Chocolate chip cookies for oh, 4th of July. Oh, that. yes. Oh, I yes. I know we're hungry. hungry. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we are. It's, uh, and unfortunately, I mean, the hour flies by, so this is our okay. last segment. But we've saved at least the most exciting to you. The most exciting to me. Because it's um, kind of your baby. You've, you've, you've designed it, it. You've watched it grow. But it's not just you. No. And, and a lot of times I get a little embarrassed because I do like to show off what I've done. <laughs> but it, it's not what I've done. You know, mm -hmm. it's a team effort, which is really important to get across. Mm -hmm. It's the customer and the customer's wishes. I can draw. Well, that's a gift that I've been given. Mm -hmm. But then it takes, and I call them superheroes because they are. Our workers are absolutely amazing. And they're, they're so cute. They keep me on track all the time. <laughs> it's not, you know, it's not uncommon. Mr. Renata, the tree needs to go that way. that way, that way, that way. So I listen to them, they listen to me, and together we can create a really That's nice great. landscape. That's great. Now this landscape is in Prince William. It's in Prince William okay. County. Mm -hmm. It is a townhome. Okay. And this is day one. And there's Santos, the foreman, and day one is a lot of talking. Okay. A lot Figuring more talking than, than mm -hmm. action sometimes. Okay. Because we have to measure. And they have to pull string lines and make sure that we're going to build a patio in this one. The level of the patio, where it is. Um, and it's very important, very important that the first day the customer is home because no matter how well we plan, there will be field changes due to the constraints of the property, mm -hmm. due to the slope, <laughs> due to where a, a gas meter is, right. something. So mm -hmm. you have to be a little bit flexible so that we can have it turn out its best. Gotcha. Can't be too rigid. Mm -hmm. So here, you know, you see we've painted lines on the ground and have getting ready to rock and roll. Mm -hmm. Day two. Well, did it start raining? It, oh my gosh. <laughs> we dug out the patio, we dug out for the walls, and I want to show you how messy this is. The process is not pretty. Mm -hmm. The end product is great. During the process, just close your eyes, grit your teeth, right. and go, this will be over soon. <laughs> um, we poured a footer because we're going to be installing a fireplace. Um, but look at how the trenches filled up with mm -hmm. mud where the walls were going to go. And we thought it was going to be just a quick thunder boomer and be over with. Oh, no. So that was the day, day number two, that we were supposed to install this Teckle Block um, fire pit kit, which comes in place. Oh, I keep saying fire pit. <laughs> Fireplace kit that's easily installed with a forklift mm -hmm. in two pieces. But it's really, really super heavy. Okay, so in the next picture, we have um, we we have a forklift truck. You see the little okay. forklift on the back. Right. It's called a piggyback truck. Mm -hmm. We've got the pallet of the fireplace, and it's still raining, and it's raining, and it's raining, and it's not going away. And so now the common area behind the townhome has turned into a mush pit, Aww. and we can't get the forklift there because we'll sink. Right. <laughs> so instead of abandoning things, I call the Gainesville location, and. Um, one of our guys down there said, Renetta, I got a, I got a crane and I got a crane operator. Mm -hmm. And this is very close to our Gainesville location. I said, sweet, abandon the forklift, send the crane. So the crane arrives in the next picture and um, it needs to back up there, but some cars had parked there. Oh. So now we've got, you know, hurdle number <laughs> two. And so I had to knock on the townhome doors until I found the owner of the cars and they very kindly moved their cars and ended mm -hmm. up, I ended up giving them my business cards oh, after because they you wanted go. them. All right. But, um, <laughs> so we had the crane, um, but the problem on this day was that the fireplace weighs a whole lot. So the crane picks it up and is getting ready to put it on site and they get it to a certain point and the alarms and the crane go off that if you go any further with this thing, oh, no. it's going to, the crane's going to tip oh, over. No. <laughs> so, and again, this is all, you know, kind of a day at work. Mm -hmm. These things happen. There's nothing wrong. I wouldn't call it a problem. It's just, oh, well, this right. happens. And fortunately, Maryfield has the means to 
work through it right. and around whatever may happen. we've got all the equipment. Mm -hmm. So, on what we had to do is we had to wait over the weekend. We left the fireplace as close as we could get it. Mm -hmm. The bottom part weighs 4,200 pounds. Wow. <laughs> and um, so that's why we had to pour a footer. And mm -hmm. then we had to wait Thursday, Friday, no, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for it to dry out. Okay. And um, here you can see the forklift installing the fireplace. It's really cool. Even the fire, the tackle block who makes this fireplace leave little slots. So the forklift, For the forklift. see the That's forklift great. Yeah. comes through there and you can easily get it leveled and put in place. Mm -hmm. Then when it's all finished, you can just slide blocks Perfect. in there. So after that's in place, we built the walls. Mm -hmm. And so these are 18 inches high, they're seat walls, so they provide um, seating for, for people. Mm -hmm. And um, we paint on the subgrade there, just kind of a rough idea, because we're going to do a little paver change. Okay. So you can see how it looks there. And it's nice to have the customer look at that, too, right. to make, make any sure changes. Right, make sure they're they okay. Mm -hmm. And as I say, I call them our superheroes, and there's Luis with his Superman cape, cape. on. <laughs> um, but you can really see it coming together, and they were so precise about this um, design that we did in the middle because I kept saying to them my one rule in this is I want as few cuts mm -hmm. of pavers as possible because it's a small spot and I want it to remain looking neat and tidy right so he was very good in that whole middle section he only had four cuts Wow, wow. he is a superman and let's like take a look real quick because we're about out of time and the last picture uh, yes almost finished it's gonna have to be to be continued gorgeous with the plants. that's right uh, Beautiful. But there beautiful, is our beautiful. outdoor living space. Wonderful. Complete. Renetta, thank you so much. These are great ideas. My pleasure. Hope you all have enjoyed this. I know I know I have. Uh, next week, David will be here. And we're gonna, in honor of 4th of July, we're going to talk about Gardens of the Founding Fathers. Oh. How that can relate cool. to you. So thanks. Tease you with that. All we'll right. see you next time. Thanks bye for bye. having me.